Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, June 8th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. The sun is spotless. But the big story, life-threatening hail situation in Colorado's Crowley County, baseball-sized hail. Strap on your helmets and keep calm. It's boom time. Take a look at this hail. Two to three inches at least. According to the National Weather Service, a life-threatening situation was underway in southeast Colorado's Crowley Co County due to baseball-sized hail. Those in the area were told to seek shelter immediately. The warning was part of a greater severe th thunderstorm warning that happened a few days ago as tennis ball size hail is also was expected in Sugar County. Baseball size hail has a diameter of roughly 2.75 inches. Tennis ball size hail has a diameter of 2.5 inches. And that hail, well, that hail could kill you. And certainly here's uh, pictures I found today. Hundreds of thousands of acres lost last night in Nebraska. The widest path of hail this farmer has ever seen, and, and this corn was over knee high and has now been obliterated, literally. Now, I checked out the interactive hail map for yesterday. There were 371,000 hail reports above one inch in the United States. That's amazing. 38,000 above 1.75 inches. And this is just the beginning of spring. Ding, ding. Sizzling temperatures in store across the southwestern U.S. Scorch scorching temperatures are in store for the southwest U.S. over the next several days with cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs and California expected to top 110 degrees. Here's the caveat. This is part of the new normal routine of summer in the desert and no records will be broken. Now, there is a severe thunderstorm warning issued for some. Tornado watch remains in effect for Ohio, especially these counties, until 10 p.m. So heads up. As indigenous farmers are seeking solutions, no thank you. We don't want that up there either. Oregon Governor Kate Brown has already declared a drought emergency in 16 of the state's counties. The only problem is that that drought emergency is only now in five counties. So there is heavy precipitation forecast for the Northwest and it's gonna be continuing. So I imagine that these will rapidly shrink out. Just look at what happened in two weeks from there to there. And that drought in the Northwest is slowly going away as severe weather for portions of the East continues. Building heat for the South and the Southwest. Scattered strong to severe thunderstorms are possible from the mid-Mississippi River Valley through the Ohio Valley and into the Southern Appalachians today. A heat wave with potential record heat will expand and impact Texas, the desert Southwest and into California as we get closer into the weekend. So stay tuned for more updates on that as it appears as if, and here like take a look at the precipitation in Oregon. Fantastic. So that is much needed. This is the total precipitated moisture. It appears um, as if we're going to get two named hurricanes later in the month. And there's the first one that's going to be a tropical disturbance that comes through the Yucatan to hit Mexico once again. And then a second one that's been on the models now for five days that emerges right in this region. So we'll probably have two named storms moving by the U through the Yucatan in the next two weeks. So I'll keep a close eye on the Gulf of Mexico for development for these systems, which are, well, they've been on the map for quite some time now. So especially the first one here, which is June 17th. So that's still nine days out. So a lot of models to crunch as Brisbane's coldest start to winter since 1904. I'm sure you've heard about the massive snows in Australia and the record cold. As polar cold intensifies across Australia, it's true, and we have the data to back it up. Opening days have been delayed as a blizzard is forecast for the southern ski fields. Ski fields, season openings this weekend have been delayed because of blizzard forecast for the southern mountains. Mount Hutt Ski Field in Canterbury has confirmed it will not go ahead with its scheduled Friday opening due to the weather forecast. Well, let's check that out. Well, that in fact does look pretty spectacular for New Zealand. Up to half a meter. Well, that's unfortunate because this is actually Tasmania and the New Zealand map uh, doesn't have any snow totals. So if we go to the Southwest Pacific and you take a look at New Zealand, we don't have any options for snow. So 
We'll take the article's word for it that the Cardona ski area near Wanaka is uncertain for a Saturday opening because of heavy snow, as well as Hutt Ski Field in Canterbury. So there's that. And we'll keep a close eye on this southern hemisphere as it heads into winter. Seismic update, no quakes of note. All is quiet on the western front. We have a strange outlier, 5.2 in Russia. Could be some seismic activity due to some nuclear testing. Who knows? Time lapse shows the Hawaiian crater floor rising rapidly. And it is amazing footage. So stay tuned for the footage now. In fact, the USGS shows a bunch of nothing first before the footage happens. And here it is. Let's take a look at that. Wow. Look at these little smokers that form right here. Little mini calderas. So a lot of activity uh, at the volcano on the big island of Hawaii. As, I mean, tons and tons of lava are just filling up that caldera. It's the Halamaumua and the summit of Kilauea that's filling up like that. And the eruption is ongoing as we take a look at the Reykjanes Ridge, another little puff, puff pass. Just about 18 hours ago, a little flurry of activity at the Reckianus Ridge that we're watching closely. Let's take a look at all regions here. And the North Atlantic as a whole, not much going on. So seismic activity is slightly lower as we come over to the sun and nothing has been happening as the grand solar minimum continues and people's heads are cut off because they think this cycle is going to be something spectacular as we glare into the spotless sun. I hope you have your special sunglasses on here. Not a single spot across the sun, little plage activity turning around, but nothing as far as spots are concerned. Let's blow it up. That's not a spot. Nope, that is a spotless sun. And we're approaching sunspot maximum, by the way. Now, Curiosity Rover sees bizarre, bizarre spikes on Mars. Let's blow that up. Now they're claiming these are sedimentary structures, and if they are, it's either a worm burrow or a fulgurite in sandstone, which would be a lightning strike solidifying that sand along the electrical charge. Quite interesting. In August 2012, the Curiosity rover landed in the Gale Crater on Mars and began exploring the surface for indications of past life. The rover made some profound discoveries during that time, including evidence that the crater was once a huge lake bed and detected multiple methane spikes, which would mean, could give good reason to why there are worms potentially in the mud or the sand. But it also could be from a lightning strike and a fulgurite, I assure you. But that's as far as we'll go into that. Now, a tiny meteoroid hit the $10 billion Webb Space Telescope, and it did, well, some damage. I mean, like a grain of sand. This tiny meteoroid struck the newly deployed $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope in May, knocking one of its gold-plated mirrors out of alignment, but not changing the orbit, orbiting observatory's schedule. After initial assessment, the team found the telescope is still performing at a level that exceeds mission requirements. So they say, so everybody says, and have you heard of the food shortages? We'll get to that. Mysterious radio signal picked up from space has astronomers baffled. <laughs> astronomers have followed a mysterious radio signal from outer space to discover a neutron star unlike any previously found. And there's the location. The story begins with Manisha Kaleb, a lecturer at the University of Sydney. She and her colleagues were observing Vela X1 region of the Milky Way as part of space that's around 1,300 light years away from Earth. They were using the Meerkat radio telescope in South Africa when they noticed a strange looking flash or pulse that lasted about 300 milliseconds. The flash had some characteristics of radio emitting neutron stars, but this wasn't like anything they'd seen before and it left them baffled. Once again, as a newfound oddly slow pulsar shouldn't emit radio waves, yet it does. And we are baffled once again as we dump billions of dollars looking for dark energy and dark matter. Now, 
a peer-reviewed paper coming out. Do you know solar and geomagnetic activity reduces pulmonary function? That's not good. We need the heart to pump the blood around the body. And it also enhances particulate pollution effects. So those people with asthma or other people that are susceptible to the particulates as pollution, well, heads up. This is the first study to analyze the impacts of solar and geomagnetic activity on lungs. And intense solar geomagnetic activity may contribute to impaired lung function. Maybe why the increase in COPD across the world because of the sun, not because of Philip Morris. Now, higher solar geomagnetic activity also promotes adverse effects of particulate pollution on pulmonary function. And air pollution mitigation may be more impactful when solar geomagnetic activity is high. Interesting paper. We'll leave you links below. Just came out this week. Now, the CDC raises monkeypox alert to level two to scare the sh out of you and recommends masks be worn during travel when on their very website the transmission of monkeypox only occurs in direct contact with infectious sores or scabs another side note the cdc warns that this disease has most been prevalent among men who have sex with men which is why they should wear always wear a mask <laughs> do you know about nano diamonds and carbon spherules from tunguska the KT boundary and the Younger Dryas boundary layer? Well, if you've watched Randall Carlson, you may have heard of this. But soon on Magnetic Reversal News, you'll also know a little bit more about why these are important and why we need to know about them. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance, like the fact that the boom is not even in the square. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon and support the work we do on both channels, as well as our Rumble channel. And if you're worried about food shortages that may rapidly creep up on you, my Patriot Supply is still delivering, and we have links below. Preparewiththeranch.com for long-term food storage. Preparewiththeranch.com. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.